What's up YouTube? My name is Zero Zeus and welcome back to another fake video. Um, this is going to be my fake grand order Babylonia episode 9 review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment and let's get right into the video. Um, yeah, this episode was definitely, they definitely didn't stop with the hype. Um, after last episode basically asked watching Ushi Wakamaru basically be tortured at the end of the episode. That was kind of crazy, right? Um, so to see them pick up with, you know, Anna still in the um, infirmary and, you know, everybody basically picking up the pieces that was broken down by Tiamat. And Kingu, <laughs> that, that's nice to say that, right? You knew it was something going on with him, but you didn't exactly know. And this is another one of those episodes where they drop an information bomb on you. And, like, if you're paying attention, you know, you'll catch it. If not, then, you know. So, basically, Gilgamesh has given Ritsuka and Mash the task. Ritsuka, Mash, Merlin, Anna, so on and so forth. That he's given them the task of going to basically find the goddess of jupiter right i think that's what they call her um this is hype for like a uh, numerous reasons for one ishtar is in another episode that's like really cool and let me just say the last two episodes leading up to now it, it was really hype um they definitely kept not suspense but they definitely kept it exciting and i was into that i'm not even gonna lie um so basically he tells them he has this secret plot for ritsuka right it's so crazy I, 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 i'm i'm explain um he has this secret plan to basically bribe ishtar and she's like so infatuated with gems and so on and so forth so he basically bribes her <laughs> so like it's it seems like it shouldn't be like a good thing to do but it works out basically um <clears throat> but not without a crash course first. So, say, let's, uh, <clears throat> they're venturing on their way to this temple that, um, we don't know it's a temple yet, but they're on their way basically venturing to where they believe Ishtar is. And she's in this temple that basically just, <laughs> it's so funny how Mash says, it, it basically just says, yeah, she's taking over, um, I can't think of the town, but it was so, I'm not gonna lie, it was big, it was sightly, and, yeah um it definitely falls under the definition of ishtar right <laughs> um so they're sitting there talking and in the midst of them talking she just shoots <laughs> from the top of the temple um in mid-sentence and after <clears throat> afterwards she flies down and she comes at them again and you get this cool fighting sequence like um mash anna not really mash but anna like she was really getting it in like don't get me wrong she just came back from being hurt from like fighting i don't know how to describe like herself i guess it, it, uh, please correct me if i'm wrong but she was basically fighting tiamat and she got thrashed <laughs> i'm not even gonna lie she definitely got thrashed but she put in that work and this episode she was right back in it and she was putting in that work and I respect that. Um, don't get me wrong, mash for the save a bunch of times. Um, she was coming through, and she was definitely, like, you see her, those finger blasts. I don't know what you call those, but she does those multiple times in the episode, and her shield blocks almost all of them. Um, but she's ferocious. Like, it, it, you could tell the difference between some of the servants that show up and don't get me wrong these last few episodes like you know leonidas and ushu wakamaru and they, they've been outrageous but you could tell like the difference like she's really putting it down <laughs> and i like seeing i like when she's on the screen because it's, it's it's a little bit not what you think like um this god and that's another thing we're about to talk about she actually got into um how you, Mash is a demi servant, right? And basically, since I think since Ishtar is a divine, a divine spirit, she can't go through a regular summoning like a 
regular servant she, she can't become a servant like so she has to inhabit somebody's body and like <clears throat> it's crazy because she says like don't think of it as i'm in, like inhabiting her body think of it like one day she just woke up and she became Ishtar, right? <laughs> she still sees everything that's going on. I, I, I mean, I, that's what she says, and I have no problem with that. But uh, it, it's just kind of confusing a little bit. But we know she's there, and rewind this back a little bit because I'm getting a little, a little, a little ahead of myself. Um, so basically. Ishtar is bribed with the gems, of course, right? And they have this little funny sequence where she just as I don't know, like you could just say she was blinded by the gems, right? <laughs> Gilgamesh knew exactly how to poke her button, right? Just exactly right, right? Um, that was funny. I'm not gonna lie. She, you could tell in her face she didn't want to, and it, it's just like it was just really funny. Every time she's on the screen, it's really funny. But I just like. They dropped that little information bomb on us. Like, she actually told us what was going on with Ren and stuff like that. And why she looks exactly like her. And it makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm not going to say she looks exactly like her because she's inhabiting her body. But you never know. It's very strange that she comes out looking exactly like that, right? Um, but, yeah, that was cool. And she basically joins them. And you knew she was She gives them a hard time. And they're flying basically and they mention this weapon right and they're talking and i i cannot for the life of me remember what it's called but um <laughs> she like has this little tense moment where it seems like she lost it or something something along the lines she she, she had to have lost the weapon or something because the way she was acting all giddy and stuff when they asked her about it obviously right um so she, so <laughs> she zooms off talking about whatever, whatever, her diet or something, something she was talking about, right? And she left. And basically they set up camp and she flies down while Ruth, Ritsuka is sitting talking to himself, right? And basically she has this little funny thing, like it's this little trope where you just think everybody wants you, <laughs> right um and she just not subtle she's kind of subtle about it but she eases into it but she just comes flat out and says it and she's like i mean and ritsuga is looking surprised and no nah, this is not i don't mean it in this way and yeah it's, it, she basically thinks that he's in love with her right <laughs> which is so funny <laughs> why would you think that right um but he basically explains to her, you know, it's all a misunderstanding. And even though she looks kind of hurt by it, she seems it's like she's still, she's still chasing it, right? Uh, not that that's a problem, but I'm just saying, like, look forward to seeing that in the future, right? Um, so she basically explains to them the three goddess alliance. And she she doesn't explain to them at the alliance but she explains how much she knows about the other goddesses and it gives us some type of insight the only thing that she she doesn't know about the jungle goddess and she knows a little bit about tiamat and well the powers of tiamat i don't i, I don't know <laughs> it, it's kind of confusing when they say it like that um but she talks to him and it's like a great asset now that she's on the team. Gilgamesh definitely shoots and he scores. You know, he got lucky and he's lucky that she's on his team. It's the Mash and Anna and everybody. It, it, you could tell that it's more of a secret. Um, It's more of a secret to who Anna really is. Just come to think about it too. Um, <laughs> The Ishtar thing is really nice that she's a part of the team, but Anna. Every time she tries to speak or no, don't you say any and don't you say anymore or don't you say one more word or something like that. Merlin was saying every time she speaks just a little bit and we get a little bit of insight of who she not who she is or just her saying anything, to be totally honest, he like shuts her up. And <clears throat> we definitely that's going to definitely come to the light in the future. Um. Uh, 
and I think that's it. I think I think that's about it. it overall, it was a great episode, and <clears throat> love to see this uh, alliance that Gilgamesh and Istar have. That you know, that's gonna be hilarious. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna end it right here. This has been my Fate Grand Order Babylonia episode nine review. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Thank you for watching, and see you all next video.